First of all, we on the side of the second respondent view today's proceedings as a very excellent day in court. And it's an excellent day for us in court because the issues are beginning to unfold one after the other before the eyes of all Ghanaians. Remember, this is a petitioner who came to court praying or invoking the powers of the Supreme Court that the results of the 2020 presidential election, when properly collated, come to a point where nobody got 50%. And therefore, they are asking for a rerun. And you would expect that they put witnesses in the box to advance this argument or to provide evidence that buttresses this. Today, as you've seen before your very eyes, there are witnesses are here making claims of bad faith, which claims are questionable, now raising questions of the venue of the declaration, now suggesting that in one breath they say they'd never saw the Form 13, in another breath, what is being tendered before the court, they say it's not a Form 13. Now, today, three key matters have been settled, in our opinion. The first is this fallacy that was being initially expressed and amplified uh, through Dr. Michael Pesa White, that the chairperson of the Electoral Commission instructed the representatives of the petitioner to leave the strong room. And on their blind side, some numbers were put together and announced. We are beginning to see clearly that that, that fallacy, at best, uh, is something that cannot stand cross-examination. You would notice that it's not just an interchange of words, instruction and asked. And I want you to take particular notice. When you read the petition, the petition, no, sorry, when you read the witness statement, statement. The witness statement says, we were asked. Check the definition of asked. Now, in the witness box and under oath, he seeks to amend that and escalate the claim by saying they were instructed. And that's why you find the Venerable Akutuan Powell did not take too much time in his uh, cross-examination. He asked one key question. He says, I put it to you that you know that you cannot be instructed by the chair of the first respondent. And you heard under oath, they could no longer tell that untruth. He said, yes, we cannot be instructed by the chair of the first respondent. And we are clear in our mind that that fallacy has been settled and the court will take notice of it. That it cannot be true that the chair of the electoral commission would instruct and that the representatives of a candidate will obey that instruction. Indeed, questions as put by the council that you selected an option, you elected, and that you were derelict in your duty. That is what happened. And we are very happy that that is being settled. Another matter that is being settled is the attempt of the petitioner and his witnesses to surreptitiously question the results by discrediting their own agents. You notice that initially from the beginning of the case, they sought to make an argument that numbers had been cooked up and that the EC's computations were incorrect. Yesterday, you saw the very skillful general with a calculator now arriving at 4751, 4751, 4751. Today, they tried another tactic by trying to suggest that there was something wrong with the results that their agents had certified from the polling stations through the constituencies to the regions. And in cross-examination, you saw it clearly come out, and it being settled, that they could not use the back door to discredit their very own agents who certified the results from the bottom up and then claim that somebody from National had said that the figures did not add up. Another matter that we believe the court will take notice of is the attempt by counsel, and we believe successfully, to settle the dereliction of duty of the persons who were nominated by the petitioner to go into the strong room and assist in the collation of results. Now, please check. The NDC and candidate Mahama accredited four people. Four. In the end, two. And this is after they had done their parallel collation. In their uh, collation center with the TV screens, one of which you saw Mr. Mahama pointing that they were 
they were winning or that they had won, and then their press conferences. After certifying or accrediting four, two went into the strong room and left. After all 16 regional returns had come in, and 13 of them had been certified by Rojo Metonunu, who was the leader of the two. And notice something interesting. Dr. Kwesa White says that Rojo certified one of them in error. I'm sure as we go further, that will be dealt with also in addresses. That these representatives of the candidate ended up sitting there and even certifying some in error. It's a different matter that will be dealt with. But what is also instructive to note is that, and I think one of you asked a question, you are not judges. Many of you are not lawyers. But you even spotted it. Now how can you claim to us from the beginning that this EC commissioner, we don't trust her? There are so many problems with her. In your press statement, you say she's doing the bidding of the MPP. Then you claim that she instructed you to go and consult your principal. And out of the four accredited people, the two who were there, both left. Why? And it was interesting listening to them. They said that they wanted to go and fill in the gaps. I'm sure you heard them, that they were going to fill in the gaps. One of the key things that is becoming interesting is why Rojo Metilnunu himself did not mount the witness box, take the oath, and say that he was instructed. We believe if he had done that, he would have been caught for perjury. Because he cannot take an oath and tell an untruth. And that is why they have resorted to Dr. Kwesa White, who now admits that he never spoke to or was never spoken to by the EC chair, yet he was a subject of an instruction and he was instructed. But the one who had the instruction, the one who went to the office, is alive, is available, but refuses to take the witness box. We think that it is becoming very clear that as these matters are settled and as we connect it to the principal issue of did anybody get more than 50 percent was the declaration in breach of article 63 the key questions will now come out and be answered now another matter that we need to draw your attention to is this form 13. there was this claim to suggest that the document that was shown uh, to the witness was done through the back door and was not form 30. First of all, let me make this point. Every practicing lawyer knows that after cross-examination, the bench has room to ask questions for clarification. And you hear the learned justices always say that we want to understand this one clearly. So to create an impression that when they ask you questions, they are harassing you, is part of the NDC strategy to begin to poison the minds of the general public against the bench because they can begin to see from the questions and the answers that they are giving the gaps that are showing up in their case remember they have already said that they think that this this court is not a balanced panel they have already been arguing that they have not been treated fairly and that some of the decisions don't make sense Marietta Briopon. and today they are feathering that by trying to poison the public by saying that they are being harassed the bench has the right to ask questions we believe that when our witnesses get into the box, they may even be asked questions. Nothing wrong with that. Now, this Form 13, which Mr. Kwesa White, under oath, claimed did not have room to state reasons for non-signing, is on page 62 of CI 127. I want to encourage you, my colleagues in the media, pick a copy of CI 127 and look at it. The last column on your right says, reason if refused to sign. That same column is available on the regional summary sheets at the constituency level. Why? Because it amounts to a certification of a complaint that will go up to the higher level. So if all your 275 constituency persons did not certify any complaint, and on your regional forms, you have gone ahead to certify all except Sehiri also, which later Rojo Metonunu now certified in the strong room, and you claim he did it in error. You don't come with a bad case now to come and say that there was no space on the form to fill in a complaint. I'm sure you all heard it. The blatant untruth being told before the court. So we are very, very clear in our mind that the matters that the court has settled for itself, which is to determine whether or not nobody got 50%, whether or not the declaration was in breach of Article 63.3, as compared to the matters that they are seeking to attest to today, show clearly, show clearly that what they've been saying when put in the box and put under oath, it's difficult to defend. We'll take your questions if you have any at this point. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, sir.
is to discredit the petitioner. Uh, you've explained why your cross-examination by your lead counsel was short-lived, but do you think that he succeeded in discrediting the witness of the petitioner? Well, as I've mentioned, the court in its final judgment would express its view on whether it believes it was successful or not. But as you all watched and followed on television, you saw a witness under oath say that there's no room to state reasons and be confronted with versions of it that show that there's room to state reasons. You also saw a witness who in his witness statement had earlier said that I was asked and I changed it to mean instructed. And then when put under further cross-examination that, but you know you cannot be instructed, admits that, well, actually, I cannot be instructed. You saw a witness who claimed he had been trained, yet claims that somebody instructed him to act contrary to the training that he had been given. So it is not for us to determine whether or not it succeeded. You saw it, and we are hopeful that the bench will come to a conclusion on that at the end of the day. If you look at the case they brought and the witness they brought, was this witness here to prove that nobody got 50%? I'm not sure you heard that witness prove that. Was this witness here to prove that Article 63 had been breached? I'm not sure you heard that. This witness came at best to say that he was instructed together with Roju to leave. And later, when put to further cross-examination, admitted that he cannot be instructed so to do. That was the main thing that this witness came to do. As to how that answers the question of 50% plus one, I'm sure the bench will decide. <laughs> At what point did you know that the declaration was going to happen at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission? I never saw in any of the pleadings, no paragraph, in which they raised an issue with the venue of the declaration of the presidential election results and suggest even faintly that that therefore amounts to an illegality or an unconstitutionality. They never raised it even in their pleadings. So when you put a witness in the box and you have made pleadings, the government of your case is that nobody won 50%. You have made pleadings, the government of your case is that the declaration is unconstitutional. And you bring a witness and the crux of his argument is that I was instructed to leave. And they did the declaration in a different place than they had earlier announced. If it's our imagination, we look forward to what the court will say on that. What I find interesting is a comment made by Dr. Aina here that the exchanges between them and the bench today has no probative or has no effect on the probative value of the evidence they have put before um, the court. I find it very interesting. Uh, and I agree with him. We are hopeful that in a possible, because this case can only end two ways, either we win or they win. In an event that they do not win, they do not come back to cite such matters, that this is why, because they have told you that they know from their 25 years of practice that it has no effect on the probative value of the evidence before the court. And we all look forward to that. Yeah. My colleague Nanabi will do a quick, a quick key summary for us. Okay. Abu uh, Shafo, 